YouTube, unless I get interrupted by a phone call. Uh, I had not been on here in about a month, but I'll throw some pictures of stuff I've been running. Uh, everything's been going pretty good. Uh, knock on this wood grain steering wheel here. I haven't had no tire issues. Um, but uh, a couple of weeks ago, that one of these loads I had this week. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I was sitting at a truck stop and I told my wife, I was like, look at all these cool loads coming in here. <clears throat> She's like, what do you mean cool loads? So I took a picture. Picture. And uh, so I asked some pretty cool loads. I bet they pay pretty good. I said, why don't you ever get me any cool loads? She said, I'll get you a cool load. So anyway, a week goes by. <laughs> this week, um, <clears throat> Wednesday, she booked me a load. I was up in... Uh, Northern Georgia, up around the Cartersville area, and uh, she said, I got you a load, it's about 65 miles away, um, going down to uh, Belleville, Georgia. I was like, all right. She said, it's a tarp load. I was like, all right, that's fine. I was like, well, what is it? <laughs> she said, pine cones. I said, pine cones, what the hell? She said, you wanted a cool load? That's pretty cool, ain't it? I was like, yeah, I guess. But yeah, it was pretty cool. Um, it was a uh, pine tree nursery. And uh, of course they do the bell pine straw. And um, then they harvest all the closed pine cones. And they separate them by species or family. And uh, Anyway, what 31 crates, three by four crates. Some of them were full, some of them were probably worth about 25,000 pounds. Uh, I had to tarp it so they didn't blow out. So uh, I run them down uh, to Bellevue to a nursery. And of course, inquiring minds want to know. I was like, uh, so what do you do with the pine cones? And they said, well, what we do is we put them in a kennel at 120 degrees and they open up. When they open up, we put them on a shake conveyor and it shakes all the seeds out package the seeds by family and resell them so uh, they can do more pine tree cones and I was like alright well what do you do with the pine cones after you know it we sort all the pretty ones and we ship them out and we sell them to places uh, that do all this arts and crafts stuff and like pine uh, garden ridge and stuff like that so I thought that was pretty cool. They said, yeah, we ship out about 10 truck loads, van trailer loads of pine cones a year. So but anyway, I just thought that was pretty cool. But uh, they said, we have our own property with pine trees. And what we do is before the pine cones open up, we'll pull a cone off the tree and we take diesel oil and we'll drop the pine cone in there. If the pine cone goes straight to the bottom, they're not ready to be harvested. If it floats to the top, then they're ready to be harvested, and that's when they shake the trees to get the pine cones um, separated by family. Kim would dry on and get the seeds out. So I thought that was pretty cool. So anyway, I left there. Did a little walk around on my truck, and uh, I left there and jumped up on 16. <laughs> Sorry. Jumped up on 16, running into Savannah, and jumped on 95, going up to uh, Yamasi, uh, South Carolina, to pick up a load of crane mats. Well, you know, I've probably done run, you know, close to 100 miles or so, maybe more. And, uh, and the truck driver came over the radio, was like, "Bud, I believe, uh, I believe you got something smoking coming out of the back of your trailer." <laughs> I looked back here, I couldn't see nothing. I was like, are you sure? And he's like, yeah. He said, I don't know, maybe you got a brake chamber or something hung up or a brake pad or a shoe or whatever. He said, but uh, it's just light smoke. So I pulled off. And uh, I was about 12 miles from my exit to get off and pick up that load of crane wings. So it was probably about 10 o'clock in the morning. So I pulled off. I got out of my truck. As soon as I stepped out of the truck, I started stepping to the back, and I seen uh, the inside of my rims were uh, moist. I was like, hmm, maybe I got a bad wheel seal or something. 
So I just happened to look over here between the cab and the trailer, and the frame was soaked. So I walked back up toward the front, man. I look up under there, and it's pouring diesel fuel. <laughs> it's like, holy shit. So I reached up under there and shut it off, pulled the hood on it, and the uh, high pressure metal supply line from the, uh, the pump going down to the front of the engine had a hole in it where the clamp was holding on there on the side of the engine block. So, uh, I called a couple of places, didn't get no answer. And, uh, all right, sorry about that. <clears throat> uh, didn't get no answer. My wife's like, well, didn't you just get a love, you know, corporate credit card? I was like, yeah. She's like, well, see if there's a love close by or something, or call a record. And I was like, I ain't calling no damn record. That's like $600. So, uh, I Googled the loves, and there was one right off the exit I was getting off of. Couldn't get a hold of nobody there, so I Googled her. They had a shop. So, I told my wife, I was like, well, I don't know how long it's been running like this, but we're getting ready to run 12 miles on down the road. <coughs> <coughs> so I fired old girl up. And we run on down the road and, and got off there at that Love's. And I went in talked to the shop manager or whatever, him and him or whatever. He's like, what you got, bud? I told him what was going on. He came out there and looked at it. He's like, man, we don't have any lines like that. We don't have braided lines. We don't have metal lines. We don't have anything like that. He said, but I'll see what I can figure out for you. So I was making phone calls, he was making phone calls. So anyway, that went on for a couple of hours. He said, all right, I finally tracked down somewhere that can make you a line. I was like, all right, where are they at? Close by? No, nah, they're in North Charleston. <laughs> that was an hour and a half south of North Charleston. <clears throat> So he said, I got a PM to do and do a diagnostics check on this truck. He said, and then we'll, we'll leave and go do it. So picture of me sitting in a love's truck there. Um, so we rode up to North Charleston. And uh, I got a braided uh, <clears throat> line made up. Uh, it's like 45 bucks. Uh, so then we came back. It took us two hours to get back because of Charles from traffic. We got back, finally got it done about 8.30 that night. And I called the broker and let them know what was going on. They said, that's fine, you pick it up next morning. <clears throat> so, picked it up this morning at 7 o'clock. I mean, I wasn't like four miles from the place. Went down there and picked it up this morning at 7 o'clock and drove up here uh, to Princeton, North Carolina. <clears throat> When I come down the road, you know, they got the road block. As soon as I top that hill, there was 10 trucks lined up. I've been here since 12 o'clock. It's now, uh, I see what time it is right now. Oh, yes. Now I don't know, it's like 2 o'clock, 2.30, something like that. Anyway. Anyway, I got this load of crane max on here. So, uh, hopefully we'll get them off. I got two trucks sitting in front of me and one's just coming out right now. Um, so I probably, they're taking about 25 minutes a truck. So anyway, I'll get home about six o'clock. Man, I got a dead head home. I call somebody I normally haul some stuff for. And they have, uh, he normally has a backhaul out of Gardner back to his place in Cleveland, which ain't far from my house, maybe about 15, 20 miles, but they stopped loading at 3.30. He called up there and got a load for me, but uh, I ain't gonna be able to get it today. I'm gonna miss it. So, uh, but anyway, so I have here or there, just a little stuff like that going on, but everything's been going pretty good. Um, the guy that bought my hot shot trailer, he, uh, he's got his articles in of incorporation. Got a quote on his insurance. And, uh, getting his MC and DOT and stuff like that. So he's getting all that stuff together. So I think that's going to work out pretty good. And uh, 
So anyway, um, I think that old boy is going to do pretty good. I'm sure there's a bunch of shit that I'm forgetting to tell you guys. But, uh, my, you know, my, my memory is about as short as everything else on my body. I like my people think. But anyway, so everything's been going pretty good, man. Uh, hope y'all been safe. Appreciate you watching. Uh, got any questions, comments, put them at the bottom. If you want to like, that's great. If you want to subscribe, that's great. Not you know, a big deal. I'm not trying to monetize my channel. Uh, but have you a big old weekend. And uh, we'll catch you on the flip side later.